cats. I followed them from outside the front door over to my office, under my office, then back around the side of the garden. Then over here, back towards the house, under this tree, which they really like to sit under this tree. This was a Christmas tree <laughs> that we bought that had a, bo uh, um, yeah, a root ball on it. And so we planted it and now it's got to be 30 feet tall. But they've gone under and then come back out again. <laughs> I really want to put a camera on them one day and see where they go. It looks like they headed back to the house. No, wait. They were going from the chicken coop. Sneaky kitties. Oh, the trail splits. The trail splits. Which way do I go? Here's some tracks. Oh, it is deer tracks. Look. Pretty sure those are deer tracks. And little deers come through here. Well, Sarah, it's been a little windy <laughs> around here, as you can see, with the branches on my porch. It's too small to break anything, but I do have an old maple tree that likes to drop branches over here. Today I wanted to show you guys some of what I've been working on. So it's my birthday today, and um, I thought I'd come out to the office and play with some of my pigments. Look at this, it looks like they are all dry. So we've got some matter root, those are marigold, that is coreopsis, and these are two different shades of scabiosa flower, and some more matter root. And I'm gonna, the ones that are dry, I'm gonna grind up and make powder out of so that I can make watercolor paints out of them.
I decided that I was going to put a couple new teas in the shop and they're just single herb teas. Last summer I was growing a very large bed of indigo because I had planned three or four different indigo classes on the land and then all of them had to be canceled because of the pandemic. So I harvested all of that and I thought well I could just put it all aside for a later, you know, making pigment later or I could make some tea because indigo is an edible plant. You can cook it like you would spinach. And it's been used historically in many cultures as a food, as medicine, as a tea, and as a dye plant. Of course, that's what it's known the most as, is a dye material. But I wanted to have something that I could share with people who didn't necessarily want to do dyeing either. So I put together just a few packets, of, like little sampler packets of indigo tea, and of a tea called jaugulan. It's an herb called Jagulan. It's Gynostemma pentaphyllum, um, or the herb of immortality. So this one is known for being a really good adaptogenic, which means it helps you adapt. It helps your body adapt to stress. It helps your body kind of stay in balance. And I have it growing all over my yard. We have some friends that used to live in the studio and um, they both loved gardening and one of them planted some jagulan and it grows. It's a prolific growing vine and it grows really fast. And so it's all over the place now. So I have to pull some of it to keep some of my garden beds uh, clear so I could use them for other plants. But it's a tasty herb. It's actually kind of sweet. And if I'm remembering correctly, it was discovered by Japanese scientists who went to China to look for a sugar substitute and um, they found jagulan. So I packaged some of this and I packaged up some indigo because I think they're both really interesting plants to know as an herb and tea. And both of them I processed in the way I um, process my green tea leaves. I massaged the leaves and um, let them dry out a little bit on the counter or in um, indirect sunlight and then I lightly kind of roast them over a fire, just enough to kind of finish drying them off. And um, yeah, and then I drink them. So anyway, I'm gonna put them in the store. There's only a few, but I wanted you guys to be able to experience it too. So I hope you like them. Hey friends, look what I have drying by the fire. This is the Wool and Honey Sweater by Andrea Mowry or um, Drea Renee Knits. And I made it for my mother-in-law. Um, she has always been so supportive of my knitting and every time I make something new she says, Oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. I think that's my favorite thing yet. But let me put this where I can talk to you. Let's see. Okay, but so far all I have knit her over these years is a, sh a shawl and a scarf. Um, she's really stylish, just like Kaya, and I, wa I didn't want to knit her something that she wouldn't like. So I decided, finally decided it was time to make her something, and I asked Kaya to help me pick out the pattern, and she saw this one, and she said, oh, Nana would like that. So I started working on it, um, I don't know, like a month ago. And, um, and it's done. And I love it. So the original pattern calls for something that's a little bit more like a swancho. You knit the pattern down the arm a good bit. 
and I'm not a fan of that style. I don't like the way it feels, and I don't like how when you raise your arms, the whole sweater comes up. So I ended up altering it so that I, I started knitting the, the arm a lot higher up in the yoke of the pattern so that you have a full, a full arm and a full body and you don't have that connection between, um, so that it's kind of like this, that all that extra fabric in between. Um, yeah, I put all the details on my Ravelry page as far as how I changed it up. I ended up starting with a size uh, s small and then going to an extra small for the body because the neck was just too tight. Luckily, Kaya and my mother-in-law are the same size, so I just kept having her try it on every time as I was knitting stuff. So Doris, my mother-in-law, doesn't know about it yet. It, it's Valentine's Day today, so I thought I'd give it to her today. I'm hoping it will be dry when she comes over. It feels like it almost is. And now that it's in front of the fire, it'll dry quickly. I just have to keep the cats away from it because she's allergic to cats. But I used... I used uh, Tuku wool and um, it is 100% finished wool, it's a fingering weight yarn, and it's a really beautiful, it looks like it's probably um, got some gray in it because there's a really beautiful rusty orange color, but it also has a gray um, hint in there, and so there's a lot of depth to it, it's really beautiful. And let's see, how else did I change it? Oh, I knit the arms a lot longer, so they're a total of about 17 inches um, long, so that she has a full arm, and I made about six inches of the ribbing. Um, but yeah, again, all the details are in the Ravelry page, and I hope she likes it. I'll get some final pictures when it's nice outside, and she's tried it on so I can show you. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. I think it's going to be beautiful on her. She's a, a strawberry blonde, too, so I think this color is going to be really nice on her as well. See ya. Oh. <laughs> well, wait a minute. <laughs> hey. It's a picture, Mama? Mm-hmm. Okay. Wait a minute. Do I look okay? <laughs> <laughs> Love the as always. Sorry. Bye. This feels like, oh my gosh, oh my, oh my, oh, I love it, I love it, oh, I love it, Yay. I love it, I love it, I love it, thank you, Paya, help me pick out oh the right Oh my gosh. You. You can something degrees here today though I'm still wearing a, a sweater it's funny how it's funny how when uh, when that, the weather changes from winter to spring even on the warm days you still feel like you could wear a sweater it's like there's still that chill in the air or maybe like chill in the earth you know like your feet are cold but the rest of you warms up I don't know and it's not spring yet here it's all it always does this in this area sometime in January or February where you just have a few days or a week of super warm weather and uh, sometimes the daffodils pop up and and things start putting out leaves and then it gets cold again because we've got another couple of months until our last potential frost but I am taking advantage of the warm weather while, while I can it was my birthday earlier this uh, this month and so Toby is building me some long rows of garden beds uh, raised garden beds. There were gardens already, but I just have to deal with a lot of weeds and this whole area where we garden, all of the topsoil had been pushed off because there was an old house here and so when it, it burned down, they just bulldozed everything off the side of the hill and so we have a lot of clay. Sorry. The roosters are saying hi. <laughs> 
but so we're building some raised beds so I have easier weed management and I can fill them with some really healthy soil and hopefully um, put in a lot of vegetables so I'm excited about that we're gonna take advantage of the weather and do that this weekend and I'm gonna move some strawberries that are in the way and I know I've not been on YouTube or even Instagram that much lately but I've just been enjoying a little radio silence you need that every once in a while and I feel like I just I don't know if I didn't I, I don't think it's the well okay <laughs> I, it's not that I was thinking oh I don't have anything to share and feeling pitiful for myself I just wasn't thinking about sharing it do you know what I mean when I was doing something I was just quietly doing it for myself or my family and it didn't feel like it needed to be a big to do on YouTube so we had my son's birthday and my birthday, um, Valentine's Day, all those little celebrations. So maybe that's why I felt like just kind of being close to home. But I had something I have to share with you before I put it away for a while because I'm so excited that I finished this. And I really love her and I don't know what else to do at this point because nothing seems like it's going to be as monumental <laughs> as my little mole. Look, she's so freaking cute! I made her a cloak because Kaya is in the middle of creating herself, um, well, I guess it's a cape. She is currently making a cloak that has sleeves for her senior project and it's going to have a second um, layer like this does. So I made her a two-layered cape and I put the instructions on how I did it on my Ravelry page. And um, she's got a little eye cord for a buttonhole and then you take it off and she's got this her perfect little purse and it does open it's got a really cute little um, like jewel button and um, her color work sweater and her let me take this off so you can see her little jumper dress which you might notice is the same color as my sweater her little jumper dress it's so cute. And in this purse, I have coming my way um, two little tiny. Um, I, I got in touch with a woman who makes like stitch markers out of polymer clay. And she's going to make a little bitty cookie and a little bitty scone to put her snacks in here. And then I also found a teeny tiny replica of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley which is one of Kaya's favorite books, so I can put that in here too. So she'll have her book packed with, um, her bag packed with goodies to keep her, um, keep her busy if she has downtime. So I'm so excited. I think she's going to love it. And I had wanted to make like a treasure chest or something to put it all in. So she has her sweater and her shawl. I've not finished the sweater or the shawl yet, but, um, and this, all the little things that I just kind of wanted special handmade goodies for her when she goes off to college. So Toby and neighbor Steve have decided to make her a beautiful box together. And it's going to be, um, well, I'll just show it to you when we, as they get along in it. They're, you know, they're just getting started with cutting the wood and measuring things out, but it's, it's going to be gorgeous. And the funny thing is, they had gotten started, and within a couple of days, Kaya said, um, she asked me if I had uh, a nice wooden box to put some of her treasured items in. <laughs> and I was like, no, but I'll keep an eye out. <laughs> it was so hard taking pictures of her, because um, Kaya was in her room, on the phone with a friend, and, um, and I went outside to take some pictures, and immediately hear the water running in the kitchen. And I was like, oh, well, hopefully that's Leaf, and she doesn't see what I'm doing. And then I hear the back door open, and she comes strolling out. So I grab the mole, and I hide her behind my back. Um, and she was talking about, you know, question, I don't remember exactly what we were talking about. She, it was kind of one of those that she was just standing there and chatting, and I'm standing there, you know, with my hands behind my back, trying to pretend like I'm just relaxing in the middle of the yard. You know, <laughs> obviously I was taking pictures of something. So she goes back inside and I immediately start taking pictures again because I was like, I've got to get this done before she sees me. I thought she went back in her room, but she didn't. She came back outside again, so I had to hide this behind my back again. I have a feeling she knows what I'm making, um, or at least that I'm making something for her. And 
she has told me that she does not watch this podcast. So I really hope she doesn't. All right. I will chat with you guys again later. Um, I hope everybody's doing really well. I hope you're getting to have a little bit of beautiful spring weather or fall weather if you're in the southern hemisphere. And uh, I've been thinking about you guys, and I hope you're well. And I'll see you again sometime soon. I'm not sure how soon. I may take a little time just to enjoy this this me time in the spring. Um, but I am post. I'm still posting on Instagram. So if you're interested in following, definitely follow me there. I'm not posting as many pictures lately, but um, I definitely am in touch there more than I am on YouTube. But hopefully, I'll see you guys again soon.